Likeable Science. I'm Jay Fidel. I'm the guest host, and uh, Ethan Allen is the host guest. Right. And we're going to talk to each other, as we often <laughs> do in, the, in the Likeable Science. And I'm not sure that I can say that the science we're going to talk about here is all that likable either. Well, yeah. people obviously like it. They, people, they like uh, it. People have gotten cell phones. The cell phones Why are, do they yes. like it? It's about <laughs> cell phones, if we didn't mention right. that. We're talking about cell phones. We're talking about the latest and greatest and maybe the most worrisome aspects of cell phones. So why, why are people so dependent? Why do they like cell phones? Well, I'm not sure, but think about how fast. I mean, literally has been in something like 15 years. They have swept the world. It's not just they swept the U.S. or, or the U.S. and Europe or the U.S. and Europe and, you know, developed parts of other. But, you know, in Africa now, in, in remote tribes in, in South America, people have cell phones and they can be in touch with the World Wide Web and talk to other people all around the world. It's, it's I suspect, it's in part because it is that connection, which is very odd because everyone talks now about how we're so siloed and isolated, but that ability to connect into a big knowledge source, a big information source, and to reach out and, and literally call anyone, anywhere, anytime. It's empowerment. Yeah, it is. It's extending your will. Right. Extending your powers of inquiry. Right. But at the same time, what we're going to talk about here, right, is the downside is, do you know how much information you are giving away with that cell phone, right? How much information you are putting back out to the companies who provide you with the service, built your phone in the first place, or are sending your messages around. And the answer is, you're giving them a whole lot of information. <laughs> to your point about how it is worldwide, it is everywhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think we realized, or Steve Jobs realized 10 or 15 years ago when he came out with this terrifically disruptive technology, that it would be in such demand in, in everywhere, ubiquitous in the world today, everywhere, every, every country, even undeveloped countries, right. poor I mean, countries, I, remote countries, everyone has a cell phone. Yeah, I don't know what the market penetration is precisely, but I am sure it set new records. Uh, you know, you look at television and refrigerators, it took, you know, 50 or 100 years to, to reach 50% market penetration. And, yeah. Uh, cell yeah. phones, boom, everyone. An yeah. And it's been that way for a while. It's yeah. not just this year or last. You know, I don't know why, but it comes to mind about the movie Black Hawk Down. Black Hawk Down, you know, the Americans were uh, trying to rescue Americans that had been lost in, in a, some town oh, yeah. in Somalia. Right? Right. And, um, and, of course, uh, the, you know, the uh, terrorists or the revolutionaries who were there um, were going to get them. And so they had to communicate where, where the Black Hawk helicopter was, mm -hmm. where it was flying, the path. And then they, they had these five-year-old kids on the ground with cell phones. <laughs> Now, that happened 20 years ago, mm -hmm. right, right. Uh, with cell phones, and they were communicating over, you know, over the, the distance exactly where the helicopters were going. I'm saying, you know, my, these five- or six-year-old kids with a cell phone, mm -hmm. it's really a weapon um, oh. that they should have this, and it's Inf way beyond that now. Information is power, yeah. Information is power. So, I mean, I, I was telling you before the show the other day, I, I had been looking for flowers for a particular occasion, going to a couple different sites where I could order online flowers. And now, yesterday and today, wherever I am, if I'm on Facebook or LinkedIn or, or anything, the ads are all showing up with exactly the same flower arrangements that I was looking at, the very same particular arrangements. You know, I mean, I mean these people knew, even the ones I didn't buy, as soon as I looked at for a little bit. Two know? questions there. One is, right. how did it get to all <laughs> those other unre apparently unrelated, you know, websites and the right. like? And secondly, how did it get there so quickly? <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who is sitting here watching this, tracking it, and saying, ah, Ethan is interested in these, these particular kinds of flowers. And so we're going to pull that link, and now we're going to stick it on this other site. That, that Almost immediately. Yeah, yeah. I mean, of course, it's all done. This happens to me, too. There are no people involved in that. If it stuff. happens to you and it happens yeah. to me, it probably happens to oh, everybody. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If I, you know, go poking around in Amazon for something, yeah. or any of, any of those big sellers... Um, ten minutes later, it's uh, it's on my email. It's yep. on other websites. Yep. It's it's just like they know Sorry. who I am. They all work together. You start this is some messages about huge it. conspiracy. <laughs> they all know who I am. This is very scary. Yeah, because well, that that's just you know merchandising. But there's right. so many other things 
that they could have that they don't tell me they have. Right. And that, this was a thing the other day that you, that you pointed out, this article about that uh, Facebook apparently had co-opted an Amazon or an, an Apple internal uh, application that was supposed to just be for Apple staff to use to actually figure out how people are using their phones and what they were doing and all this. And Facebook gave... Uh, sort of got a hold of that, encouraged people to let them use it, and they tracked everything they were doing on their phones, on their tablets, where they were going, how much time they were spending, what they were doing there. Huge amount of data that, that they were, didn't exactly realize. Well, I'm sure people did realize. I'm sure they had to sign an accept button, you know, click an accept button somewhere that allowed Facebook to do this. But uh, Apple, by the by, turned around and essentially disabled that app and with that app all of facebook's other <laughs> internal user apps got disabled and sat there for two days without not being able to track all their people and it's okay with a, me a nice, a nice little slap on the wrist <laughs> yeah really really scary uh, yeah. and, and this has been going around for a while i mean i remember this has to be mm, 10 years ago where there was this little article about about the iphone at the time, it was only a few years old. Mm -hmm. The iPhone had a file that some hacker found, which had a, which had many, many thousands of lines of, of data in it, identifying where you have been. So it was, it was reading GPS, mm -hmm. and it was saying, making a sort of a track of where you had been from moment to moment, yeah. you know, from seconds to seconds, you know, all around town. Mm -hmm. It knew where you'd been. And you didn't have any access to this file. Right. And when they went and asked Apple, Are, do you have access to this file in everybody's phone? Uh, they said they didn't answer. They, they stonewalled them. So, <laughs> of course they do. You know, they wouldn't get that data if they weren't time. using it. It's just too inviting. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's I mean, too yeah, easy. It's, it's just like they want to know where you surf on the web, where, where, what sites you're spending your time on. Because the more time you're spending on those sites, that's indicating more interest, right? And that's... You're liable to be spending money there, you know, if they're commercial sites, certainly. Yeah, so, um, yeah. you know, question, how much do we care? And, and there's two levels of that. How much do I personally care? You know, I think most people, I don't know how you would answer mm -hmm. this, but I, I don't care if you know where I am. I don't, I don't care if you know all the things I do on my phone. I, mm -hmm. I don't care. I'm not, I'm not into espionage. Right. I'm, I don't have a lot of secrets. I'm, I'm what you see is what you get kind mm -hmm. of guy. Um, but um, you know there are people who don't want to be known. I mean, who don't who don't want their personal information to be. Where do you fit, Ethan? Yeah, I mean, uh, rather like you, I, I I don't particularly care too much. I don't. I'm not doing stuff that I I feel a deep need to hide. But there is a whole thing. If let us say a, a government, our government, or decides that they don't <coughs> they don't want people who have, you know, been participating in a particular demonstration that they, they didn't like that. With that uh, location tracker, they can say, oh, Jay Fidel was at that demonstration, you know. Um, of course, they will have gotten you on video anyhow, so they could identify that way. But, yeah. you know, that's the thing. They can now, there are so many ways to track you. It is so hard to, you know, get, get back to Walden Pond, you know, where, where you are <laughs> truly alone. Now. And even if you do somehow get back to Walden Pond, you know, there are satellites and drones Watching now. you anyway. Yeah, right. You cannot escape. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, you know, the other, so the one is the personal, the individual reaction to mm -hmm. the, you know, the notion that they're, they're you know, getting data on everything right. you do, everything you communicate through the phone, all your email, your mm -hmm. message traffic, um, your phone calls, uh, and your location. That's a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm including purchases that you make. I mean, a lot of people do, do their computing on their phones. Right. And, and that's especially so in third world in developing countries mm -hmm. because they don't have a computer. Sure. They only have the phone, right. and these apps let them do what you and I might choose to do on a, on a laptop. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know what, 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 what concerns me is the second level of this. The second is the macro level. Mm -hmm. It's you have concerns maybe, or I have concerns, not, not that much. But my concern is that the whole country, okay, is giving data to these corporations, which are consolidating and getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And, and the data is being consolidated right. in the process. And it's hard to say that you can stop that from getting into the hands of people who would use it against you. Right. Okay. And the, the question then is, so, you know, do I care uh, if the data of the country 
um, is getting into the hands of people who I didn't, you know, we collectively did not approve uh, as recipients of that data. And, you know, and if they're benign, it's okay. Mm -hmm. And if there are no sanctions, it's going to just be on a shelf. And I think a lot of people think that way. It's, it's going to be a shelf. They're going to look at it. It's just a lot of just zillions of bytes of data. Mm -hmm. Who cares? You know, but, but it's not that simple. In the 21st century, exactly. there can, like as there is in China, you know, and, and China is a lesson for us all. It's not right. going to end in China. Right. Um, there are sanctions. Mm -hmm. So if you do stuff that crosses the line, um, that violates some norm, some rules, some mm -hmm. imagined, uh, you know, problem that the Chinese have or any country has, um, then, <clears throat> then there are sanctions. You, you may lose on your social quotient. Right. You may not be able to make a loan or take a train or take a plane or get a passport or right. who knows what. And the sanctions are not necessarily known. Right. So we are learning that there can be sanctions that arise out of nowhere. Right. And these sanctions are based on data that you thought yeah. was totally innocuous. Yeah. You, you meaning the whole community, thought was totally innocuous. Yeah. And somebody is using it, getting it, that you don't know who, and then using it, right. and then applying sanctions against right. you by using it. Now, this is, you ever feel like you were trapped in a steel cage? <laughs> Yeah. It's getting to feel that way, yeah. especially in China, but probably here too after a while. And so, and so I feel that we cannot, even if you and I don't care much that they know right. our stuff, right. um, we have to think of this on a national scale. You know, the thing it is, you know, 300 million people are giving them this stuff. Exactly. It's, it's like the analogy about the frog in the water, right? You know, the frog's in the water, the water gets a little warm, that's fine, a little warmer, that's fine, a little warmer, that's fine, but at some point... And you've got a boiled yeah, frog, right? Yeah, and, yeah. And it's too late. So, so, I mean, in your notes for this program, you pointed out the Fourth Amendment. Right. Can we visit that for a moment and get some direction there on what the Fourth Amendment tells us about privacy? Sure. So the Fourth Amendment <coughs> says, the right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated, and no warrants shall issue but upon probable cause, supported by oath or affirmation, and particularly describing the place to be searched and the persons or things to be seized. Now, that does not really relate to hackers. If you had a way to hack my system, that's not a violation of the Fourth Amendment, because the Fourth Amendment is talking about government. It's restricting, limiting government from doing these things. Right, right. And courts. Well, and, and government agencies and executives. But you, you could argue that hacker was violating your right to be secure in your person. Okay. So, um, but you will agree with me, it's yeah, government. It, right. More, it was it. more derived or, or built, I believe, to so protect people against Here we have 300 government. million people, and right. all, of, all of the data is going through these very few cell phone companies, mm -hmm. very few providers, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and that uh, one of them or a number of them decide uh, they're going to capitulate to government pressure, mm -hmm. uh, whether that's a, a Fourth Amendment search, a warrant, mm -hmm. or one of those new, you know, warrantless searches mm -hmm. they got since 9-11. And it goes to the government. Mm -hmm. And it goes to the government in zillions of bytes. Yeah. Okay? And now the government has it from mm, the whole country. Yeah. And the government is not limited to what it can do with that. Um, and the government can look at us all yeah. as p potential terrorists. Right. They look at look at us all as China does, um, yeah. you know, with social quotients and right. whether we're going to have the benefit right. of this, that, or the other. No, again, I, I and you're you're of course the attorney, but one can imagine attorneys coming back at a government that tried to do that and quoting the Fourth Amendment to them and sort of saying, "You have unreasonably violated my rights to be secure in my person." You know, how and, would that work? Well, I mean, I, I would say that our yeah. our our privacy has probably been violated many, 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 many times. I suspect. And the government has that information. Right. And there was no search warrant. Right. Okay? <laughs> right. And that's, if they try to do, to act upon that, I suspect some attorney could argue, hey, you did not have a search warrant. Therefore, that evidence that you have of this misbehavior is, you know, has to be thrown out because it was an un unreasonable search. You may not even but, know. Yeah, that you that were it happened, right? Yeah. Or the sanctions are being applied. Right. Yeah, exactly. And, and that you're being targeted yeah. and identified, and yeah. you're a person of interest. Yeah, as and as who these, knows what will happen to you? Yeah, as these multiple data sources begin to get into these larger and larger conglomerate databases, where they can find more and more information about who you're calling, where you've been, what you bought, when you bought, who you talked to, what you said. Yeah, uh, and suppose Homeland Security is listening in on 
conversations by immigrants of questionable documentation. Right. Um, you know, are they going to be able to raise this mm -hmm. issue? Do they mm -hmm. have the money, mm -hmm. you know, to contest action taken by Homeland Security mm -hmm. about their immigration status, which Homeland Security got by virtue of one of these warrantless searches? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, really hard, and they don't have any money to fight mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm. They're not even sure what happened. And so the query, are there, I don't know the answer there. Are there organizations around that are protecting us in this? Is the ACLU actively involved in protecting us? Because frankly, I think our privacy, our constitutional right to privacy is being undermined as we speak. Yeah, um, I mean, the ACLU certainly claims on their website to be concerned about this. Of course, they may, all their stuff is probably being closely monitored by the government too. And yeah. anyone who they're contacting or who contacts them probably is goes on some list somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's scary. Uh, and so when I get scared, I usually take a break. Let's take a quick break and come back and press more on this interesting subject. <laughs> Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about creating a superior culture of excellence, leadership, and finding greatness. I interview guests who are successful in business, sports, and life, which is sure to inspire you in finding your greatness. Join me every Monday as we go beyond the lines at 11 a.m. Aloha. Hey, aloha. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii, airing every Wednesday here on Think Tech Hawaii, live from the studios. I'll bring you guests. I'll bring you information about the things in security that matter to keeping you safe, your coworkers safe, your family safe, to keep our community safe. Uh, we want to teach you about those things in our industry that you know may be a little outside of your experience. So please join me because security matters. Aloha. Okay. Well, we got pretty paranoid about that. <laughs> <laughs> about you know the, the the fact that information not only from one phone but from hundreds of millions of phones are going back, and I think that's going to be more the case going forward because there are so many phones and so many governments who see this as an opportunity to do their thing, and their right. thing may not be constitutional. <laughs> uh, the Constitution is in jeopardy anyway these days under this administration. So, <clears throat> okay, the, so the question is, um, the platform permits this. The platform is absolutely brilliant and getting more and more brilliant. Right. You got phones that are absolutely the best imaginable phone. Every time a new Samsung comes out, I say to myself, this is the best phone I ever, <laughs> you know, and I, every time I say mm -hmm. that, and it's true. Mm -hmm. And I guess it's the same with the iPhone. And then you get software and apps, you know. Steve Jobs' idea about apps, that was a terrific yeah. idea. That was as right. equally disruptive as, as the phone itself. Right, but then these apps either go wrong or somebody misuses them, right? So the one that came up the other, other day, this teenager discovered, the, I guess the parent of a teenager discovered, was that it was possible to, on FaceTime, to listen in to somebody when they're, they weren't on FaceTime with you, basically. This uh, is like the Amazon Echo, isn't it? Right, yeah. Uh, they can listen in. They do listen right. in. Right, that's what they're made to do, is to, to listen in, record this, think about what you're saying, as it were, decide what information you want. No, I have a, a friend of mine who <clears throat> was fairly high up in the uh, defense uh, department uh, uh, in his career, and he, he simply would, says he would no more have a, a, you know, a Alexa in his, in his home than, than he would you know, be screaming obscenities out a window. I mean, because everything, everything you do then is liable. Is, that thing is hearing it, whether yeah. it's on or off, right? Yeah. And who knows when it's off, switch is off. Is it yeah. really off? <laughs> yeah, and I think people are somewhat naive about it, you know. So if you have, I don't know, 10 million Alexa, uh, Alexas out there, Echoes mm -hmm. out there, people think that, well, they, there's so much information right. going. There's so many conversations mm -hmm. and eavesdroppings happening all at the same moment. They're never going to actually listen to mine. They have no way to identify mine. They're wrong. Right. They're wrong about that. I mean, in the same way that my hovering over some pictures of flowers for a few seconds, some algorithm picked that up and, and knew what I was doing and is feeding me back that information because it thinks I'm interested. They have very sophisticated algorithms to, to yeah, pick yeah. up whatever information they want yeah. on sort of using... Artificial uh, intelligence, uh, yeah, a, a theme, machine language, uh, it's all... Uh, yeah, listening for your voice, predict your voice, uh, the electronic signatures of your particular device, or uh, searching a particular area physically. Yeah, I mean, there, there are so many ways to get at it. It's... So, 
Okay, the basic phone, it's a phone. But the basic phone is not that important. A lot of people don't make calls anymore. They make messaging, right. you know. I mean, I, I've seen right. that around me. I don't do it my, myself, but mm -hmm. everything is a message right. or an email. Right. Um, and, and all these functions you can have on a computer, you have on the phone. And, and then you have FaceTime kind of, you know, mm -hmm. stuff and, and um, uh, Skype and right. Right. Uh, Zoom and all, every communication right. possibility is all there on your phone. But it's all digitized in essentially the same language, right? And somebody could latch into right. that, get all of that, yeah. everything you ever said and did on that phone. Yeah. So, and, and you know what? I think it's going to be more of the same. Oh, Those programs can be more sophisticated every oh. time you look. Oh, yeah. I mean, it used, used to be, yeah, that, that they... Mm. They couldn't really capture some of that data. Now they are, the, the, the power of, to capture this is increasingly great. Uh, storage has become cheaper and cheaper and cheaper, basically. So, yes, people can afford to store the gazillions of terabytes of information now. And uh, there are algorithms to sort through that and find what, what information the, the seeker wishes in that, in, in that yeah. huge haystack. So you, have, you, know? you have more memory, more right. storage. You have access... Yeah. To, to the cloud. Right. I mean, these phones are attached to the cloud. Right. Everything is going back and forth, up and down from the cloud. Yeah. Um, and you have faster processors. So they can do more and more and more. Exactly. Now that leads to, you know, greater functionality for you. Right. But greater functionality for you is greater exposure for you. Absolutely. And, you know, your, your life is um, an, an open book. This is, yeah, I mean, this is a classic. It's that, that classic two-edged sword, right? Oh, yeah, it's got these real pluses for us. Yeah, because your phone knows what you want to do. When you say, call Ralph, your phone knows who, who Ralph is and calls Ralph for you. You know, that's great. So you become dependent. But, but yeah. You know, I, I told you that I was separated from my, my phone yesterday for, you know, 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was I was getting I was getting a, a nervous breakdown already that I didn't I wasn't with my phone yeah. I, I had no particular need for my phone but right. it, it, I didn't have it yeah. and and the possession of the phone the availability of the phone meant everything to me and I didn't realize how dependent I am right. other people even much more so than me by the way yeah, yeah. No, no, I, I agree and I, I've had that same very unnerved feeling recently when if you step out and realize you're just walking to the, the corner store a block away but <gasps> Where's my phone? You know, why do you need a phone to walk to the store a quarter a block away? You don't, but you yeah, feel yeah. very unprotected. You feel very empty, vulnerable somehow without it. Everything know? is on there. Yeah. Access to your whole life. Right. Access to your finances. Access to I your mean, even friends. Even you know where it is, it's it's in your home. You know, locked up. That's all fine. But but still, you don't have it with you. You don't have access to that. You, the, the you're loss, cut off. The at, loss is a, is catastrophic. Yeah, yeah, you're cut off from that channel. You know. Yeah, from the world. Yeah. From your entire network. You from all the identifying people. points in your life. <laughs> yeah. So the, the greater the dependency. Um, it, it feeds on itself, yeah? The greater the dependency, the greater I use the dependency. Mm -hmm. I, I provide information to it. It becomes my alter ego. Mm -hmm. And the greater the exposure that someone else, whether it's a hacker or a government agency okay. or a private company that sells it to other private companies right. or government agencies mm -hmm. will take and use that against me. Right. There's nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. So now I have to ask you my big question. Uh -oh. What do we do? Yeah, what do you do? I mean, tr you try to figure out reasonably good passwords, you know, which will give you a little, some level of protection. You try not to be sort of stupid and lay out your information in really easily accessible ways. Uh, you don't, you know, type your social security number and stick that in a standard email and, and send it off to somebody. Uh, you realize that there are people trying to get information all the time and you just before the show were, were dealing with a, a fraud alert, which turned out to be legitimate, but sometimes those fraud alerts are actually the people who are fishing for the information. Well, there's right? a lot of people out there trying to do that yeah, to you. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, I, I've been getting bunches of calls these days from the Social Security Administration talking about my benefits will be suspended. And, and they aren't from the Social Security Administration. They're from fraudsters, you know, trying to get yeah. into my, tap into my yeah, Social Security, yeah. you know. And, and don't lose your phone. Oh. Do not lose uh -huh. your phone. And I, and I like to talk about gizmos that help you not lose mm -hmm. your phone. But, um, you know, there was this terrorist in California. He was involved in some kind of terror, terror mm -hmm. action, him and his wife. Mm -hmm. and, and the FBI got his phone and they tried to crack right. it. But, but uh, they, they, they were afraid that right. if they tried, 
to you know try to to test password at x number of times they would it would demolish all the the data mm -hmm. on there and they it went to the fbi went to apple and apple asked to apple if they would mm -hmm. help crack the phone and apple said no that's a violation of privacy we're not going to open that's that's a slippery slope mm -hmm. okay so the fbi went to israel so <laughs> to technology guys in israel and they cracked the right. phone the reason i tell you the whole story is that clearly you can crack a phone. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. You can make all the passwords you want on access sure. to the phone. Sure. And, 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 and data is in there somewhere, and, and some clever person who understands the technology well enough can get at it. Yeah, can yeah. get at it. And yeah. so uh, it, it's just as if you were using the phone, yeah. they could use the phone. Yeah. So, you know, to me, I mean, I don't want to get everybody nervous about this, but don't lose your phone. No. It's not a good idea to lose right. your phone. But there are, you know, apps and programs and techniques, uh, I suppose, where, you know, this is one of my favorites, where if you're more than X feet away from your phone, you have to have some kind of radio chip on you. But if you're more like X feet away from your phone, it makes a beeping sound. <laughs> tells you where. Right? It's, it's like the car key in the parking right, lot, right. where you press the lock the, or yeah. unlock button right. and, and it yeah, lights right. up. Right. So the same, you know, the, the, right. the phone or something tells you that you've been separated. You better go back yeah. and get it. Do not leave it in the restaurant. You yeah, know? I know. We, we've, we've used the Find My iPhone feature uh, a couple of different times and just found the phone in the apartment, you know, or dropped down behind a chair or something. But, you know, it, that was, you know that's very, it's, it's powerful to have that. And, yeah, the, the reverse would be good. It would have your phone get separation anxiety from you, you know, if, you, if it feels that you're leaving it behind. <laughs> so what about um, trusting it? You know, there's this thing uh, this morning on uh, National Public Radio about trusting Amazon. Mm -hmm. um, one guy said, you expect me to trust a mega corporation? Forget about it. What kind of, it's an improper use of the term trust. <laughs> but, but the reality is that Amazon has, has created so many things that make us trust them. Mm -hmm. They have the public trust. If they say something is going to arrive on Tuesday, by the way, we have something coming to the studio <laughs> today. I hope it's outside. Uh, <laughs> That if they say it's going to come on Tuesday, it does come on Tuesday, right. and then we begin to trust them. And little right. things like that, yeah. and you know, and most people will say, "I never had a bad experience with Amazon." Right. Well, they're working at that; they're right. trying to make us trust them. And so you have the huge mega corporations that do have our trust mm -hmm. by hundreds of millions of people. They have our trust. Mm -hmm. Should we trust them with our data? Well, we already are. We already are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, the, the question is how, how much should we trust them with our data? And yeah, yeah. I think that's a, sort of got to be a personal decision for everyone. How, how, how deeply are you going to trust these networks uh, that you deal with? You know? And people sometimes I don't think are as aware as they should be about how that information, what information is going out, how it's, how it's being transmitted, where it's going, where it might go. Yeah. How about the I don't care approach? You know, I'm not going to worry about this. I'm just going to live my life, me and my phone together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we're not going to worry about it. And if, if anybody gets it, uh, we'll, that, we'll move on. We'll that's good. Just the other thing I, I want to talk about in this same privacy is the, the use of the genomic databases now to find, find suspects and persons of interest to law enforcement, which is a whole other privacy whole other sure and they're catching prices. criminals yes. now with dna it, exactly even when the criminals themselves and even their near relatives haven't given them any dna but other distant relatives have and yeah it, yeah no and again a very powerful and stuff someplace in the cloud it's all there yeah. together yeah and a uh, a government agency or a series of agencies right. that are cooperating with each other right. they can find your dna right. and your social security number and everything you ever did I'll, and that's kind of scary. I'll, There's I'll nowhere to run. I'll be interested to see if people try to bring legal challenges against some of those because it's a very, it's a very interesting area. Right? Very interesting well, area. And it, what it means is we all, I got, I got the wrapper on this now that we're out of okay. time. <clears throat> the big thing we need to do is protect the Constitution in general. Bingo. Because once government can have a free access to this mm -hmm. kind of data about us, that's going to be a new world, yeah. and we really have to we really have to protect ourselves, and we have to protect the Constitution, mm -hmm. so that it's not an op we are not collectively an open book. Exactly. Ooh, exactly. Scary but important. Yes, very much so. So we mean have to vote for the right candidate, <laughs> take the right positions at the yeah. ballot box. Yeah. yeah, absolutely, it's critical. Yeah. That's why we need an informed electorate. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, All Ethan. Right. Great to talk to you as always. Always fun. Aloha.